Hello everybody, welcome to Fedo One Languages. Hola a todos, bienvenidos a Fedo One Languages. <laughs> well, we got a new video for you today, but uh, it is about the same lesson we shared last week. If you haven't watched it yet, please go back and take a look at it, okay? Um, it was about modal verbs, modal verbs which, which are called a helping verbs or verbos ayudante. We use them to give additional meaning, additional information to the main verb in function, all right? They are always followed by a bar infinitive. I mean the, the infinitive of the verb, but without the two, okay? Um, obviously, if you, if you don't understand that, go back and watch the last video we shared, okay? The previous video. All right, so, algunas personas nos contactaron para decir, bueno, Werner, danos más ejemplo, porque yo mismo, yo sé inglés, pero he cometido errores con eso, con aquellos. Y otra persona me dijo, bueno, danos más ejemplo y cosas así. Así que estamos aquí para aclarar estas dudas y, ¿verdad? De manera individual vamos a dar ejemplo con los verbos y, y, y dedicarle, no sé, 5 o 10 minutos a cada uno de los verbos. ¿Ok? Let's go. They only, they only exist, they only exist in simple present and simple past. No more. ¿Ok? Si quieren que sea conjugado en otro tiempo, entonces... En este mismo video, video vamos a ver algunas alternativas que podamos tener. All right, let's go with the example. So, uh, we got the first one, which is can. All right, can. And past simple for can is could. All right, could. Can. Could. All right. So let uh, we use can to talk about possibility. Uh, capacity and ability but we also use them to to ask for permissions to give permission or to decline to deny permission to decline permission all right so eh, lo utilizamos ¿verdad? para hablar de nuestra capacidad de posibilidades de habilidades pero también se podría pedir permiso con ellos no negar un permiso o lo que sea let's see for example repeat after me Peter can fix this easily. Peter can fix this easily. Peter can fix this easily. Uh, Pedro puede, Peter, Peter puede arreglar eso con facilidad, fácilmente, okay? This boy can do anything. This boy can do anything. You see? Okay, let's read it together, all right? Peter can fix this easily. This boy can do anything. Peter can fix this easily. This boy can do anything. All right? Estamos hablando de que él pueda hacer lo que sea. Su capacidad, ¿no? Su habilidad, él pueda hacer lo que sea, ¿no? Él pueda arreglar esto y aquello. All right. Let's go with the next example. The next one is, I cannot assist you right now. I'm sorry. I cannot assist you right now. I'm very busy. Repeat after me. I cannot assist you right now. I'm very busy. <laughs> I cannot assist you right now. I'm very busy. I cannot assist you right now. I am very busy. All right? No puedo atenderte ahora. Estoy muy ocupado. All right? Ahí entonces, el like como, se está negando la posibilidad, ¿no? De atender a la otra persona. Porque no es posible que atienda a la otra persona. No le es posible en el momento. O no puede atender a la otra persona en este momento. ¿Por qué? Porque está ocupado. Entonces, pegamos not, agregamos not al verbo can para negación, ¿ok? En can, eh, hay una pequeña diferencia que lo separa de todos los demás verbos, es que cuando se niega, not va pegado. O sea, no escribimos can not como separado, como ocurre en los demás verbos, sino que se pega, ¿ok? Y tiene su contracción can't, como se puede notar aquí. ¿Ok? All right. So let's continue with the next example. Jasmine can speak multiple languages fluently. Jasmine can speak multiple languages fluently. Jasmine can speak multiple languages fluently. Ya rápido. Jasmine can speak multiple languages fluently. ¿Ok? 
Jasmine can speak multiple languages fluently. O sea, esa niña tiene una capacidad, o sea, puede hablar varios idiomas eh, con mucha fluidez, ¿no? All right, so, let's see the last example we have here. The last example is like, eh, for permission. Para que tú veas cómo se usa, ¿verdad? El verbo can, para pedir permiso de algo. Can I use your computer? Can I use your computer? Yes, you can. No, you can't. Okay? Can I use your computer? Yes, you can. No, you can't. Can I use your computer? Yes, you can. No, you can't. You see? So, this is all the example. I mean, aquí abarcamos, ¿verdad? Casi todo lo que significa el verbo can. ¿Verdad que sí? Eh, por también, um, I don't know, can I go to the bathroom? Can I go to the bathroom? Teacher, can I go to the bathroom? Sir, can I go to the bathroom? Uh, whatever, you know. Yes, you can. Of course. Uh, can, I, can I use your cell phone? Can I, can I make a call? Can I make a call? Yes, of course. No, you can't. ¿Se entiende? Now, let's go with could. Could, uh, which is the past simple, a simple past of the verb can. All right? Uh, this one we use is to talk about past possibility or past ability, you know, or capacity, for example. But also we use it in the moment to politely ask questions. I don't know if you understand this. Let's see the example. All right. Um, I thought I could do it. I thought I could do it. Sorry for disappointing you. I thought I could do it. Sorry for di disappointing you. I'm sorry. Let's get back. <laughs> I thought I could do it. Sorry for disappointing you. I thought I could do it. Sorry for disappointing you. Pensé que lo podría hacer. Pensé que lo podía hacer. Disculpame, perdóname por decepcionarte. You see? O sea, I'm talking about a past possibility, no? I thought, I thought that I could do it. Pensé que lo podí, podía hacer, pero lamentablemente no pude. You get it? All right. So let's go with the, with the next uh, example. We could, not, we could not understand what the teacher was saying. We could not understand what the teacher was saying. We could not understand what the teacher was saying. O sea, no, podí, no pudimos entender lo que el profesor estaba hablando. Estaba diciendo, ¿eh? You see? O sea, talking about a past uh, yeah, possibility or, or whatever, you know, something that we couldn't do. All right? If we couldn't, uh, that couldn't happen, for example. Que no pudo pasar. Que no pudo suceder. Quizás debió suceder, pero no pudo. All right. Let's go with the next example. The next one is, if I'm not wrong, my grandma could speak seven languages. If I am not wrong, my grandma could speak seven languages. If I am not wrong, my grandma could speak seven languages. If I am not wrong, my grandma could speak seven languages. Do you know that? Si no estoy equivocado, mi abuela podía hablar, podía hablar siete idiomas. Increíble, ¿verdad? O sea, estamos hablando de algo que, ¿verdad? Eh, un talento, una, una habilidad o, o, o de lo que nuestra abuela era capaz. You get it? Now, ¿qué sucede? Les decía que también se podría usar could en el preciso momento para pedir un permiso. En este sentido, de esta manera, tiene un sentido condicional. No se me entiendes. Let's see. Could you please lend me some money? Could you please lend me some money? Could you please lend me some money? Some money? O por ejemplo, si estás llamando a tu tía o no sé, primo, lo que sea que tenga Estados Unidos. Hello, daddy. Hello, auntie. Hello, uncle. Could you please send me some money? I'm in La Oja. <laughs> All right. You understand this. Okay. So, could you please uh, open the door? Could you please uh, close the door? Eh? 
Could you please prepare some coffee for both of us? Hey, could you please prepare some coffee? ¿Podrías preparar algo de café? ¿No? Podrías. ¿Ves? En este caso, como se traduce como podrías. No es podías en este sentido. No es eh, pudiste. ¿Por you understand? Remember that we always use the bar infinitive of the main verb. All right? When we got a modal verb. For example, can fix. We don't say can to fix. Okay? Cannot assist. We don't say cannot to assist. Okay? Can speak. For example, I had someone that, eh, una de las personas que me pidió que le aclarara esto, me dijo, tú no sabes, Ferne, que yo solía decir, di que, I can spoke. O sea, conjugaba el verbo. No sé el verbo, sé que el siguiente verbo, el verbo principal, se queda en, al infinitivo. Lo único es que le quitamos el to, ¿ok? We use only the bar infinitive, como da, la base del verbo. You remember that, o sea, recuerda que todo verbo en inglés, eh, al infinitivo tiene un to, por ejemplo, to speak, to assist, to, to eat, to use, uh, to do, for example, to understand. Pero ¿qué sucede? Cuando tenemos un modal verb antes del verbo principal, entonces el verbo principal no puede estar eh, acompañado del to. Pero si sí usamos su base infinitivo. You understand this? All right. Ahora... Para este verbo can, si tienen alguna duda, por ejemplo, quisieran usarlo en otro tiempo, pero lamentablemente está limitado solamente a simple past and simple present, ¿qué haces? Hay una alternativa donde podemos utilizar el verbo, the verbal expression, uh, to be able to. To be able to has the same meaning as can. For example, to be able to means... Uh, It is to refer to possibility, to capacity, to ability, uh, something like that. Let us see it, okay? All right, so let's go with the example. As I said before, we use, we use uh, be able to, or to be able to, uh, this is a verbal expression. Uh, to talk about capacity, possibility, whatever. You know, the same thing as the verb can that we, we've, we just saw, okay? So let's see the example here. I will be able to join you if my wife approves. <laughs> I will be able to join you if my wife approves. Podré juntarme con ustedes. Si mi esposa aprueba. You get it? So, como obviamente podré en inglés, cuando, la, cuando usas el verbo can, tú no puedes realmente decir, I will can, tú sabes, o I will can, o I can will, por ejemplo, algo así. No existe, no se puede. Entonces, ahí está la alternativa. To be able to, tú lo usas en su lugar. I will be able to I will be able to join you if my wife approves. I will be able to join you if my wife approves. All right? And the next one uh, is she won't be able to concentrate with her husband here, you know, <laughs> or with her kids here, you know. Ella no podrá como concentrarse. She won't be able to concentrate. Es el pasado eh perdón, es un futuro, pero a negation. She will not be able to concentrate. She will not be able to concentrate. Okay? Es el casi el mismo verb to be, pero en este caso, como está acompañado, ¿verdad? Able to, entonces se convierte en un verbal expression. You understand? Which change, uh, which changes its, its meaning. All right. So let's go with the next one. I am not able to give you that information. I'm sorry, sir. I am not able to give you that information. It is confidential. All right? No puedo darte esa información. Disculpa. I'm sorry. I cannot give you that information. I am not able to give you that information. ¿Ves que son lo mismo? Entonces, como be able to, prácticamente es lo mismo que, que el verbo can. Lo único que es es más extenso porque se, el verbo to be se conjuga en todos sus tiempos. You get what I mean? So, I am, I will be, I had been, whatever. 
Tú sabes, cosas que no podemos hacer con el verbo can, por ejemplo. Eh, pero, ¿qué sucede? Hay gente que, que cometen el error, que, que dicen, I could be able to do something. Yo sé, si tú dices, I could be able, usando be able ya estarías haciendo pleonasmo, porque al final del día, could and be able son lo mismo, quieren decir la misma cosa. Entonces, si tú dices, I'm going to see if I can be able to, to join you. I'm going to see if I can be able to join you. Ya es un pleonasmo. No sé si tú me entiendes. Porque can habla de capacidad, de posibilidad. Entonces, be able to habla de capacidad. No sé si tú me entiendes. You get it? All right. The last example so we can go. Oh, this one. I'm sorry. The next one. Uh, we weren't able to finish our, the homework. I'm sorry. We weren't able to finish the homework. We were not able to finish the homework. O sea que como le puse la contracción, pero se puede decir, we were not able to finish the homework. We weren't able to finish the homework. ¿Ok? No pudimos eh, determinar la tarea. No sé si tú me entiendes. Only Gina was able to complete her work. All right, we are back. Well, we got uh, the next modal verb, may, with his simple past, with its simple past, might. All right? Why do we use may? We use may to ask a question, to ask for permission, to give permission, or maybe to decline permission also. It is a little bit formal. We also use it sometimes, you know, to talk about weak possibility in the future or whatever. Let's see the examples, all right? Uh, may, repeat after me, may, all right? May I use your phone? May I use your phone? Yes, you may. Hmm? May I use your phone? ¿Puedo usar tu teléfono? Yes, you may. Eso es muy formal, ¿no? Um, the next one. May I join you? Si tuve un grupo de personas que está bebiendo o lo que sea que están haciendo, ¿no? May I join you guys? May I join you guys? Si están comiendo, tomando, comiendo su almuerzo, también pues, hey, may I join you guys? May I join you guys? May I join you? ¿Puedo juntarme con ustedes? Eh... No, you may not, ¿verdad? O oh, yes, you may. No, you may not. Entonces le agregamos not, ¿verdad? Eh, también para ponerlo en negación. ¿Verdad que sí? Eh, the next one. We may not have enough information right now. We may not have enough information right now. Eso es como like a weak possibility or something like you're not sure about it. But we... It is possible that we don't have enough information at the moment. You see, when you say we may not have enough information right now, puede que no tengamos suficiente información ahora, ¿verdad? Para proceder con X o Y caso, ¿verdad? All right, so let's go with the next example. Eh, también podemos usar may para quizá for wishes, like, you know, to wish someone blessings, no? To whatever, positive sense. Things. May God bless you. May God bless you. Hey, may God bless you. <laughs> may your team win. May your team win. Que tu equipo gane, no? Que Dios te bendiga. You see something like that. Todo, como todo modal verbs, el verbo que le sigue siempre se usa la base infinitiva. No se conjuga en ningún tiempo el verbo que le sigue. No podemos decir, may I to use your phone. So, uh, may I to join, uh, may, God, may God to bless you, may your team wins. Hay gente a veces que cometen el error que cuando dicen may your team wins, entonces con, como le ponen eso al tercer, al tercera persona. Lo que pasa es que se le olvidan que es un verbo al infinitivo, lo único que no usamos es el tú. Pero todo verbo que le sigue a un modal verb, entonces es un verbo al infinitivo, pero sin eh, la palabra tú. No se lo entiende. You get it? We use the only the bar infinitive, o sea, la base, ¿no? All right. So let's go with might, which is the same thing. You see? Like weak possibility about the present and future, for example. Let's see. 
It might rain tomorrow. It might rain tomorrow. Puede que llueva mañana. You see? Puede que llueva mañana. La siguiente, el, el siguiente ejemplo. This might be true. This might be true. Puede que sea cierto. This might be true. Okay? <laughs> mi, mi, mi ejemplo favorito. <laughs> a few dollars might be the, the solution. I'm sorry. A few dollars might be the solution of my problems. A few dollars might be the solution of my problems. A few dollars might be the solution of my problems. Of my problems, for, for example. Okay? What is it? A few dollars might be the solution of my problems. You see? Eso como una posibilidad, ¿verdad? Like, you understand it. Mike might not be able to attend the party. Mike might not be able to attend the party. That's rapid, ¿verdad? Mike might not be able to attend the party. Mike might not be able to attend the party. Ves como es weak possibility. It is not the same to say Mike will not attend the party. Ya tú estás afirmando que Mike no, atende, eh, no asistirá a la fiesta. Pero cuando dice he might not be able to attend the party, tú dices puede que no atienda la fiesta. O sea, también puede que aparezca. You see? For example, I don't know. I might be able to join you, for example. Pero no te estoy diciendo, I will join you. You understand? Continue with will. The modal verb will. And it's simple past would. Okay? Would. All right. So we use will only to talk about the future, to indicate, I mean, to form the future tense of the main verb, just that. This is the, its only function, okay? What do, how do we, why do we use will? To form the future tense of the main verb, all right? O sea, para formar el futuro del verbo principal. Lo ponemos ante cualquier verbo para formar el futuro. Okay, for example, sorry. The first example, I will call you tomorrow morning. Okay? I will call you tomorrow morning. Hey, I will call you tomorrow morning. Okay? You see? Te llamaré mañana temprano o mañana en la mañana. This is the function of will. You see? You put it, I mean, it is an, a modal verb, okay? Porque a veces la gente de que lo confunden como un auxiliary verb y esa cosa. Es un modal verb. Even when it works, it has an auxiliary verb to form tense, to form you know, to form the tense of a, of a main verb. But it is a modal verb, okay? I will call you tomorrow morning. I will call you tomorrow morning. All right, the next one. Will you come to the party tonight? Hmm? Will you come to the party tonight? Will you come to the party tonight? Will you come to the party tonight? Vendrás a la fiesta esta noche? Si? Si? Okay. You see? The next one. We won't lose hope on that. We won't lose hope on that. We'll keep trying until we succeed. Aquí hay una contracción de will not. Ahí hay una contracción de we will. Okay? Para que entiendan. Por eso que puse esos ejemplos como así. Tan diversos. Para que tengan más o menos... Un ching de cada cosa, no? We won't lose hope on that. We won't lose hope on that. No perderemos la esperanza en esto. En tratar. Eh? We'll keep trying. We'll keep trying. Until we succeed. Okay? Junto ahora. We won't lose hope on that. We'll keep trying until we succeed. Por ejemplo, imagínate que tú quieres motivar a un, un grupo de personas, ¿verdad? En baloncesto o lo que sea. Hey, you, you know, guys, I know, yeah, we got that defeat, but we won't lose hope on that, okay? We'll keep trying until we succeed. Let's go! ¿Eh? <laughs> o sea, yo sé que está bien, quizás nos acaban de derrotar, pero eh, no vamos a perder la esperanza hasta que lo seguiremos intentando hasta que nosotros 
alcancemos el éxito o esa corona o lo que sea. ¿Verdad que sí? Hey, this is one, your favorite. <laughs> I will never lie to my wife again. She always finds out the truth. <laughs> oh my gosh. De que el instinto, ¿verdad que sí? I will never lie to my wife again. She always finds out the truth. Esa no le voy a dar la traducción. Usted que lo averigüe, ¿ok? I will never lie to my wife again. She always finds out the truth. I will never lie to my wife again. She always finds out the truth. <laughs> okay, let's go with wood. Wood. Utilizamos wood para hablar, para formar tiempo condicional, conditional tense, okay? Eh, puede que tenga a veces como una forma del pasado, dependiendo de cómo usa, dependiendo del contexto de la oración, okay? All right, let's go with the examples. If I had money, if I were rich, I'm sorry, if I were rich, I would travel the world. If I were rich, I would travel the world. If I were rich, I would travel the world. <laughs> si no estuviera en la olla, yo viajaría por el mundo. Por lo menos, aunque sea Colombia, iría a algunos lugares de eso a visitar. All right? If I had money, I would go to the beach, for example. If I had money, I would go to the beach. I don't know. I want to go to a resort right now, for example. Okay. The next example is to, like, you can use it uh, to politely ask question. So, would you please lend me 1,000 pesos? Would you please lend me 1,000 pesos? Would you please lend me, I'm sorry, would you please lend me some, oh my gosh. Would you please lend me 1,000 pesos? Would you please lend me 1,000 pesos? ¿Podrías prestarme mil pesos? ¿Ves? Ok, let's see this one. The little girl wouldn't have opened the door if the child lock was on. The little girl wouldn't have, would not have opened the door. Opened, I'm sorry. que es participar pasado de ahí tiene un sentido más o menos quizá de, del pasado no pero vamos a ver eh, con, el, con el auxiliar have y seguido del participio pasado del main verb que es eh, open no so the little girl wouldn't have opened the door if the child lock was on or if it was activated no Say child lock como seguro de niño, algo así. La niña no habría abierto la puerta si el seguro de niño estuviera activado. The little girl wouldn't have opened the door if the child lock was activated or was on. Okay? All right. So let's go with the last example here. I told you that Olivia would not would not accept this type of invitation. Hmm. Esa es una propuesta inadecuada. Maybe Olivia did not accept, all right? I told you that Olivia would not accept this type of invitation. I told you that Olivia would not accept this type of invitation, all right? I told you that Olivia would not accept this type of invitation, all right? So, this is what we have. All right, let's continue with shall. With its uh, simple past, should, okay? Should. All right, this is the most common, obviously. The past simple is more common than, than the present tense, okay? So, why do we use shall? I mean, este es considerado anticuado, como dijimos en el video anterior. No se usa mucho, pero en, en Inglaterra sí, y en algunos, se puede encontrar en algunos casos. ¿Pero qué significa shall? We shall to show 
determination to make suggestion and to make prediction or prediction, I'm sorry, about the future. Es, en cuanto a uso del futuro, es casi parecido a will. For example, I shall be a famous actor one day. I shall be a famous actor one day. Yo seré un actor grande un día. You see? O un actor famoso, ¿no? O sea, prácticamente es un... Está hablando del futuro, ¿no? This is a prediction about the future. I shall be a famous actor one day. Okay? The next one is... We shall meet Mr. Heyman tomorrow at 8 a.m. I'm sorry. We shall meet Mr. Heyman tomorrow at 8 a.m. All right? Eso estamos hablando del futuro. We will meet Mr. Heyman. Podría ser lo mismo. In this case, it is interchangeable with will. Okay? Um, we shall meet Mr. Heyman tomorrow at 8 a.m. Okay? Veremos a Mr. Heyman mañana, señor Heyman mañana a la 8, ¿ok? O sea, bueno, debemos verlo, pero lo veremos. You get it? Um, shall we dance? For example, como, ¿verdad? En algún lugar con, uh, shall we dance? You see? O sea, podemos bailar. Shall we dance? Podemos bailar. Es como, ¿verdad? Um, but also, we got it. Um, Shall we share the, the information? We can use it also to, <laughs> to ask for suggestion, as we said, okay? Yeah, so, shall we share the information with our parents? For example, shall we share this information with our parents? Shall we share this, this information with our borders? With our family, for example, whatever, you know. Okay, yeah, this is should. Should is to make suggestion, to give advice, uh, or maybe it's, it's, it may refer to weak obligation, okay? Daddy, you should take a break. You've been working all day. Baby, you should take a break. You've been working all day. Huh? Hobby. Como si tú le quieres a tu esposo, hobby. Or baby, I don't know, whatever. Honey, you should take a break. You've been working all day. Huh? All right? That should I, what should I do to keep you happy? Pedis sugerencia. What should I do to keep you happy? Girl! Con esa carota siempre, caramba. Vamos a cortar esto. What should I do to keep you happy? Tell me, what should I do to keep you happy? <laughs> well, you should consider buying a new car. <laughs> well, you should consider buying a new car. <laughs> you should consider buying a new car. You should consider buying a new car. You should consider buying a new car. That way you can keep me happy. All right. Mom should not be wearing that. Eso entre el mano hablando, ¿verdad que sí? Okay, mom should not be wearing that. She shouldn't. She shouldn't. She's no longer young. <laughs> mom should not be wearing that. Mami no debería estar vistiéndose así, o no debería estar, ¿verdad? Cambiándose así, poniéndose esa ropa. She shouldn't. Es la contracción de should not, ¿no? She shouldn't. She shouldn't, for example. She shouldn't. She is no longer young. Ella no es una joven. <laughs> Ella ya no es joven. <laughs> mom should, mom should not be wearing that. Mom should not be wearing that. She shouldn't. Mom should not be wearing that. She shouldn't. She is no longer. We. I'm sorry. Mom should not be wearing that. She shouldn't. She is no longer young. Esta vieja, mi madre, ¿eh? por si acaso. <laughs> All right, you understand this. So let's go with the next one, which is must, okay? 
All right, let's continue with must, okay? Uh, the modal verb must. We use must to express or to indicate, uh, I mean, obligation, for example, to give advice or to give order to communicate a requirement. But sometimes it can be used to, to make supposition supposition about the past supposition about the past let's see the example we have here right this is a supposition i guess he must enjoy his job right i guess he must enjoy his job i guess he must enjoy his job i guess he must enjoy his job. I guess he must enjoy his job. Hmm? Debe disfrutar su trabajo. Seguramente disfruta su trabajo. Que él debe disfrutar su trabajo. Mira como siempre está feliz. Caramba. Wow. All right. Uh, the next one. Por ejemplo, aquí dar una orden, ¿no? Para dar una orden. He must go immediately. He must go immediately. He must go immediately. All right? El debe irse ahora mismo. El debe irse inmediatamente. He must go immediately. He must go, he must go immediately. He must go immediately. All right? Let's continue with the next example. Uh, like to communicate requirements, no? Uh, something like that. The rules must be observed to the letter. The rules must be observed to the letter. The rule must be observed, I'm sorry. The rules must be observed to the letter. The rules must be observed, oh my gosh. The rules must be observed to the letter. The rules must be observed to the letter, all right? The, the rules must be observed to the letter, okay? Hey guys, the rules must be observed to the letter, okay? La regla tienen que seguirse al pie de la letra, no? Las normas tienen que seguirse al pie de la letra. The next one, Jeremiah, Jeremiah must stop complaining, you see? Jeremiah must stop complaining constantly. Jeremiah must stop complaining constantly. <laughs> Jeremiah debe dejar de quejarse todo el tiempo, constantemente. Jeremiah must stop complaining constantly. All right? So you see, es como like, quizás un consejo o un aviso, no sé si tú me entiendes. You get? Uh, un advice, suggestion. But in this case, like, yeah, debe dejar de quejarse, no? He must stop complaining constantly, okay? Daddy looks exhausted. This is a supposition, again. He must have been, he must have had a tough day. Daddy looks exhausted. Oh my gosh. Daddy looks exhausted. He must have had a tough day. <laughs> Daddy looks exhausted. He must have had a tough day. I'm sorry. Daddy looks exhausted. He must have had a tough day. For example, right now, since I had to post this for a long time now, before I get back because I had someone visiting me. <laughs> someone important. All right. So this is what we have. Must is to communicate rules, to communicate requirements, all right, to give order. A obligation not to indicate obligation things like that all right so let's go with the last one which is ought to all right ought to <laughs> all right let's continue with the modal verb ought to okay ought to all right O2, or simplemente O2. All right. ¿Qué quiere decir O2? We use this to communicate rules, to communicate obligation, but, and also moral requirements. O sea, todo lo que tenga que ver con valores 
con la moral, cosas así. Entonces utilizamos ought to. All right. So let's see the examples we have here, okay? Let's take a look at them. Let us repeat together, huh? I, I need a coffee, I think. I don't know. You ought to listen carefully. You ought to listen carefully. Debes escuchar atentamente, cuidadosamente. Debes escuchar cuidadosamente. You ought to listen carefully. You ought to listen carefully. You ought to listen carefully. All right? The next one. We ought to obey our parents. We ought to obey our parents. We ought to obey our parents. Okay? Debemos obedecer a nuestros padres, ¿verdad? Que es ya una norma, una regla o un mandamiento incluso que está ligado con la moral, con los valores, ¿no? Con la moral y los valores. All right. Let's continue. Everybody ought to obey the rules and regulations of our workplace. Vamos, vamos, vamos. Everybody ought to obey the rules and regulations of our workplace. Okay, workplace. Everybody, everybody, everybody ought to obey the rules and regulations of our workplace. Place, ok, todo el mundo debe seguir o debe obedecer a las reglas, las normas eh, ¿verdad? de nuestra organización, de nuestra, de nuestro trabajo, verdad que sí. This is it, you see. Now, we ought to, for example, in here, next example, you ought to wear a seat belt while driving for your safety, you ought to wear. You ought to wear a seat belt while driving for your safety. Debes eh, tenerte el cinturón o la correa, ¿no? Eh, en el coche, ¿verdad? Del coche. Eh, para, tú sabes, por tu propia seguridad, ¿no? Cosas así. All right. So let's continue. I ought to have kissed my crush. <laughs> I think you like this one. Aunque no te lo tradujera en español, no te lo voy a traducir. Porque yo sé que te gusta. <laughs> I ought to have kissed my crush when I had a chance. <laughs> I ought to have kissed my, my crush. I'm sorry. I ought to have kissed my crush when I had a chance. I ought to have kissed my crush when I had the chance. I ought to have kissed my... I ought to have kissed my crush when I had the chance. You know? <laughs> I don't know, but... I ought to have kissed my crush when I had the chance. I ought to have kissed my crush when I had the chance. I don't know. I mean, these type of opportunities, they don't repeat themselves. I ought to have kissed my crush when I had the chance. <laughs> All right. So this is what we have here. Así que sucede. Tanto ought to como must casi van a la par, ¿no? Lo único que el otro, eh, este se enfoca un poquito más a la moral de la persona. Pero ambos son para deberes, ¿no? Lo que debes hacer, lo que comunicar obligaciones. You know, you must go. You ought to go. Así que sucede. Lo único diferente con este de los modal verbs es que tiene un to. Uh, tú ves, como uno diría, bueno, no podemos decir lamentar con este específicamente, ¿eh? no podemos decir de que we ought to obey, sino ya el um, phrasal verb o the verb expression, entonces trae el to, we ought to obey, por eso se usa como ya, viene así, ought to, o sea, la expresión en sí solo no significa, no es la expresión, ese solo no es el modal verb, sino junto con el to. We ought to obey our parents, ¿ok? Es como por ejemplo tenemos to have, pero have to es una expresión similar a esto, similar a must, ¿verdad? We have to obey our parents. Entonces, we have, quiere decir yo tengo, ¿verdad? Pero cuando tú le agregas el to, entonces le cambia el meaning a to have, que es deber, debemos. ¿Verdad que Entonces lo mismo pasa como quien dice. 
prácticamente con ese verbo ought. O sea, la expresión verbal ought to, entonces es que significa debemos o deber, eh, deber, ¿no? Se comunica obligaciones y etc. Así que estos verbos, como ustedes pueden ver, no tienen un pasado simple como el, el must y este. Los anteriores ¿verdad? tenían ¿verdad? su simple past y simple present, pero must y este no tienen un simple past o un simple present. Bueno, tienen su simple present, pero no tienen simple past. ¿Qué sucede? Si quieres hablar de algo pasado, lo único que tienes que hacer es agregar have y, y después el verbo en acción lo pone en su participio pasado. Por ejemplo, I ought to have kissed. ¿You see? I ought to have kissed. Por ejemplo, este verbo específicamente este, ought to, no se, no se usa mucho la negación. La gente prefiere usar should en su lugar. O sea, like como I ought not to have kissed. For, for example, I ought not to, I shouldn't have kissed. Mejor. Entonces, en este caso, eh, no debí, ¿verdad? Haber besado. I shouldn't have kissed. O sea, la negación en este no es común o no tiene mucho sentido. No sé si me entiendes. All right. So, vamos a hacer una pequeña pausa aquí. Los modal verbs, alguien me preguntó, si, tiene, si pueden usarse con tú, ni, sin ninguna excepción. No. Los modal verbs, can, will, should, shall, could, would, eh, whatever, must, ought to, no, se, no tienen un tú antes que ello. O sea, no, no hay to can, no hay to shall, no hay to qué sé yo qué, etc. No, eso no existe. ¿Ok? So, eh, para responder también la siguiente pregunta, alguien me decía, pero Ferne, ¿y eso también se pueden seguirse por auxiliares? Porque veo que tú pones have, por ejemplo. Yeah, I ought to have, I must have. ¿You see? O sea, se pueden... Eh, eh, I don't know, I must do my homework. Do is, es un auxiliar verb. Eh, I don't know. She must be late. Or something like that. Whatever. You know? Eh, pero los auxiliares, o sea, pueden seguir los modal verbs. Ahora los modal verbs no le siguen a nadie. Son arrogantes. Son egocéntricos. Incluso ellos no se... Son invariables. No se conjugan con ninguno de los pronombres. O sea, no se varían con ninguno de los pronombres, como lo decimos en el video anterior, que I can, you can, no hay de que I must, no, I must, no hay de que I can, no, eh, pardon, no hay de que she can, eh, she can, he can, o sea, así como están escrito, es así que se conjugan en todos los pronombres personales, eh, suje, sujeto, ok, subject pronouns, all right, y lo último era que we cannot use two modal verbs, ¿ok? For example, I can't will, or maybe I will can't. I, I, no, no. Two modal verbs doesn't, uh, don't, follow, don't follow each other. Two modal verbs don't follow each other. All right? I want to understand this. ¿Ok? Uh, yeah, that was all for now. Please click on like. Share with your friends and family. Comment if you still have any doubt, any concern. Just like we, I mean, we, we just responded to a comment with this video, okay? And also some people that reach out to us via message. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet. All right? Este video, el final de este video es para que tú no vuelvas a cometer el error de, de usar dos modal verbs, uno después de otro, o también usar el full infinitive para un modal verb, y que tú can, no, o tú will, tú qué sé yo qué, no. All right? Entonces son eso. Así que más adelante le daré la diferencia en el siguiente video. ¿Qué diferencia hay en, entre... Los primary auxiliary verbs y los modal verbs, ¿ok? Para que lo puedan diferenciar, porque a veces la gente lo confunde. Como los primary auxiliary verbs are eh, to do, to have, to, to be, ¿no? 
the model verbs, obviously we had can, we don't say to can, you see, will, we don't say to will, shall, we don't say to shall, may, must, ought to, okay? Algunos con su simple past, or en los dos últimos no, all right? Uh, but the model, uh, the, the, the primary auxiliary verbs, we can, o sea, se, son conjugados en todos los tiempos, all right? Ok, ah, última, último consejo. When we have modal verbs in a sentence, we always start, start for, to make questions, for example, or to ask questions, we always use them. For example, could you do this? All right. Can you help me? O sea, ellos van primero, ¿no? Como modal verbs, helping verbs, ellos van primero. Ok? All right. Bye. Have a great day.